What's up guys? Welcome back to Digital Dive In, the proper gaming talk show. It's your boy, Mr. Monkey, and with me today is SGK in the flesh. What's up guys? It is Friday, April 23rd. I had to look at the date because the days blend together. And there it's another week and more is happening in gaming news. Um, this week actually has a good amount of gaming stuff. We actually had to cut some topics because there were just too many. <laughs> There's just too much going on in the video game world. Uh, starting off with um, some Sony news, right? So Sony actually came and pulled like a 180 and really, really impressed us. Uh, they came out and said that, well, you know, like last week or the week before, I forget, they announced that they were shutting down the PlayStation Store for the PS3 and the PS Vita. And they were doing that just to focus on next gen and current gen stuff, the PS4 and the PS5. However, this beginning of this month, the or beginning of this month, beginning of this week, they quickly announced that they made a mistake and they are not going to be shutting down the store for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. Uh, the CEO, Jim Ryan, announced this, saying that they made the wrong decision and the change was actually because of the outcry from Sony fans, which is really, really cool. It's more and more Sony seems to be actually listening to their fans <laughs> companies in general i mean we saw this again with uh the whole sonic movie and them changing the entire design of sonic but the fact that sony is you know pulling a 180 on this is really 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 cool no it is um honestly it's funny because we were talking about last week or the week before about Sony not caring about preservation of their legacy and their games and everything. And, you know, some will argue, you know, there's always the arguments like, oh, we'll just get the new thing. You know, some people don't want to get the new thing or have the money or even have the time. You know, like there's so many people that work so much that it's just like getting a new console will be kind of null and void for them. You know, yeah. so it's really nice that they were able to kind of just kind of step back. And it's like, of course, eventually they, they're probably all going to cut the servers for PS3, but oh, of course. at least not for, you know, at least not for the foreseeable future right now. Um, same thing with Vita and people are still developing games for the Vita. So that's really nice. That they actually, kept those stores open. That's actually surprising. <laughs> the Vita is still <laughs> somewhat viable. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that system was way ahead of its time. It had it, had it, had they put more, work into it had more dedicated developers and put it out this year or next year i feel like it would have done a lot better especially you, after that psp go fiasco jesus yeah that wasn't so great <laughs> the, i love the ps3 to be honest but um that's not the only thing sony has been doing and um the next story is kind of like yay for sony but not really yay for sony because so a uh you know how the playstation 4 and the playstation 3 uh gaming preservation group found out that the cmos battery in those systems if it dies it essentially breaks your system like you can't play digital games can't play physical games can't do anything with that system if the clock battery dies so apparently uh the same game preservation group uh, called Does It Play discovered that the same issue is present in the PlayStation 5. Now, a lot of people have been freaking out about this, right? Of course, because they're like, oh my God, the we're not going to be able to play games in our, place, our brand new PlayStation 5 ain't soon. But it's like, no, okay? So, <laughs> first of all, first of all, I just want to throw this in before I pass it off to Jules. Uh, the PlayStation 3 clock battery is still going strong 20 years later. Yes, it has had some issues. Some small group of players have seen their clock battery die, but not it has not been that widespread of an issue. Now, the battery uh, lifespan does range between 10 to 15 years. However, that can also be fixed with a firmware upgrade, update. And probably that's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> but for anyone freaking out uh, just about the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 for that matter, by the time this issue even becomes an actual issue, it's going to be like 20 or more years down the line. So you have nothing to worry about right now, right in the immediate future. You just don't. Plus, Sony already announced that they are looking into the issue. They, that actually just dropped yesterday on Thursday. Um, so they're looking into the whole CMOS 
issue and seeing how they can fix it. Again, it'll probably just be a firmware update because, you know, that's just what they do. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. I mean, well, for starters, I, I don't think people, I, don't, I think people were misinterpreting what they were doing. Does it play? They were just saying that there was a flaw in the system yeah. that could come to bite some people in the ass. It could not. Um, you know, so it's not an immediate problem. Your PlayStation is probably going to break from something <laughs> else before exactly, it breaks from the exactly. battery. You know, so I don't think it's it, especially with like you know PS5 is doing all these great patches right now. They're really getting their system yeah. together, um, tightening up some loose ends. Uh, so I feel like if we just focus on that per se, we can just kind of, it's just going to be left in the back burner. It's, it's not, like you said, it's not going to become a problem until it comes to the next console generation and people still want to hold on to the PS5. Exactly. You know, same thing that's happening now. And stuff like that. Yeah. Same thing with the PS4 and PS3. So, you know, it just, it's just going to take some time. And then at the end of the day, when it comes to PS5, that's probably going to be reverse compatible for the next generation console. Oh, 100%. I think Sony has learned its lesson. <laughs> about reverse compatibility so yeah i mean um, yeah because the playstation 4 to 5 is completely reverse compatible backwards compatible rather so i'm sure even with the playstation 6 they're going to extend that backwards as much as they can yeah exactly so at that at, at that point you can either get a pc or just buy a new console of the exactly. same console but i don't know who's going to do that at that point <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of up in the air at this point you know yeah but i think people should calm down a little bit just just you know just put it in the back burner you know put it in the back of your head and just kind of mosey on along exactly but and especially now that sony's actually looking into this issue they should be able to release a firmware update for the playstation 5 4 and 3 for that matter so mm -hmm. I doubt this issue will be an issue in a year. Yeah, probably not. And even if it is, they're probably just going to keep on releasing patches and stuff that will fix the issue. If there's some sort of bug or some sort of something that's wrong. Sony's really good at making updates. Okay. <laughs> patches. They're really good at they fixing are. their shit. <laughs> <laughs> it might be jank when it comes out, but they're really good at making it great. So <laughs> <laughs> Sony, as long as you keep fixing your stuff, We'll keep buying it, okay? Promise. <laughs> but don't make it too jank when it comes out. Yeah, please don't limit. make it jank. Please, <laughs> just, just don't. Uh, moving on, we got some Discord news. So a while ago, there's this report out that uh, Discord was in the talks with Microsoft to sell the rights to Discord. Uh, well, rather, I think Microsoft was over there trying to buy Discord. I'm not sure who came to who first. <laughs> but out lately. yeah exactly regardless it's over discord's not selling to microsoft thank god because we do not want discord to become skype just no okay <laughs> no <laughs> i mean i think we see it in all facets of media where you have the bigger company buying out the little company then yeah. what made the little company special changes the integrity is lost it's gone it's changing and then Every, nope, like nobody wants to product anymore because they were trying to combine it and make it something that is exactly, not, you know. exactly. Yeah, so I'm really, really glad that Microsoft is or Discord's not selling to Microsoft at all. Um, however, they did say that they are going to be focusing on internal upgrades and possibly bringing Discord public, which would be kind of wild. I would love to own some Discord stock, honestly. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> plus plus with them going public they could actually get more funding that would allow them to make significant upgrades on their platform you know there's some upgrades i would love to see on discord but oh, yeah i mean we'll absolutely see. i mean honestly i find discord just confusing to navigate me um, oh it just is because i haven't <laughs> you know i'm like and that's the thing when when i started getting my pc games i started buying multiplayer games a lot of them i just play by myself because i'm just like i don't yeah. well finding friends is kind of difficult on steam it's yeah, not as easy as it yeah, is on it playstation is. or on the one, xbox so. i think the one thing i want to see with discord is them integrating it into uh playstation because it's already kind of integrated for yeah. xbox like i'm pretty mm -hmm. i think they have an app on xbox but i really really mm -hmm. really want them to have an app on playstation because that would be really really great for cross play for people on other systems for oh, people yeah. on pc mm -hmm. that way you can just get on discord make it party 
on there with all your friends and not have to worry about doing it in the in-game chat because in-game chat thing, sucks. Um, <laughs> I, I was, and it's funny you say that because I was just playing crossplay with Outriders last night. I was on the PC and then I was playing with my friend that was on uh, PS5 and we literally had to make a party on our phone, make a party through PlayStation and get on the computer and then, you know, mix match it. It, it, it wasn't as seamless and as fluid as it could have been. Yeah, you know, exactly. So. Something like that would definitely be helpful. No, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, because I play Warzone a lot, crossplay, and I have to rely I mean, on the game chat, and I hate game chat so much. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to uh, what we hate this week, because that is our new, apparently, section of this show, <laughs> of the weekly dive-in. Uh, Naughty Dog, <laughs> so Naughty Dog didn't come out and say this officially, but uh, according to a report from Bloomberg's uh, Jason Schreier, I think I pronounced his name right. Uh, Naughty Dog has no plans for a Last of Us Two Part Two DLC. Unfortunately, for the last, the, the original Last of Us, they released that small expansion that focused on Ellie and her friend, and we got to learn more about Ellie and her background and her sexuality and stuff like that. That was really really cool. Just delve deeper into her character. And there were talks about doing a multiplayer expansion for The Last of Us Part 2, but... Which is what everybody's waiting for. <laughs> Literally. Honestly, I could care less about a multiplayer expansion, but <laughs> it doesn't matter now because apparently Naughty Dog has no plans to develop or release any DLC for The Last of Us Part 2. And honestly, that sucks. <laughs> I love the game. I would love to see an expansion in either the uh, the form of a DLC, single player DLC, or even a multiplayer. As much as I don't care about a multiplayer for this game, it would still be nice to see. So, I mean, from I have I have a group of friends that play uh, Last of Us and played the first, played them religiously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like a lot of people love the multiplayer. It was jank. It was jank. But a lot of people <laughs> looking weird. forward to the. It was weird. <laughs> it was as you know, weird as it was as weird as the Uncharted multiplayer. Like that was just bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, just Naughty bad. Dog multiplayer in general. Yeah, Naughty they Dog can't, multiplayer in general they, is just they can't really get weird. it down. They can't get it down. It's just eh. a lot of people were looking forward to the second one because they were gonna ha get the kinks hemmed out. You yeah. know, just get it together, tighten it up. And my theory is honestly, they're doing this because they're trying to focus on a Last of Us one remake. Yeah, exactly. To, That's what I'm thinking too. Which. From a marketing standpoint, why won't you focus on the game that you have out currently? Exactly, and this is what we talked about last week. It can be. Yeah, you we know? talked about that last week about like why would you focus on remaking the first game when it's not that old when you could focus on giving more content for the second game that's out. It's new. Not a lot of people have played it yet. Well, I'm not saying not a lot of people. A lot of people have played it, but <laughs> have just, yet to accept it. Exactly, and I would even <laughs> I would even love like a next gen upgrade for the game too. Like, shit. yeah, we haven't seen that yet, oh, or have we? No, I don't think we got a next gen graphics update yet. I'm for PS4 and PS5, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure, but either way, it sucks that we're apparently not getting any DLC for The Last of Us Part Two. I would really, really, really like to see it. But, oh well, I guess. Naughty uh, Dog, I just, I, why? Just why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you, you don't want to get hate mail, you know, you don't want to, you know, yeah. disappoint your fans. And you well, you're disappointing your fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're doing, and you want to do, and this isn't something about the story of the game or exactly. something that, like, you know, we, you know, how people were complaining about it before it came out, you know what I'm saying? It's not like that, it's just... Hey, you, you even, they even said themselves that they were working on Last of Us 2 expansion. They were working on something DLC related. It's we're probably gonna not going to get soon. anything for like years or at least two years. Then maybe they're and just not then, announcing it and they're just waiting to just drop it. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, they've been kind of pulling the wool over our eyes with Last of Us 2 this whole time. <laughs> yeah. They hey, have. Joe's going to be in this game to the halfway point. Uh, no, no. He's going to get cut in the beginning. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Moving on to uh, our last topic, which is another controversial topic, and that is the whole Days Gone fiasco. So, if you have been into the internet at all, you know that the Days Gone writer came out and just busted on fans 
of the game saying that if you do not support the game on launch, you have 100% no reason to complain about this game not getting a sequel. Saying that the best way to support it on launch is to buy it, in his words, buy it at full fucking price. <laughs> One, I just got to come out here and say I love how candid this dude is. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was, I, I it. love it. I love it. I'm like, he, and he even said, he's like, people are going to hate me for my views here, but... Mm-hmm. Fuck it, basically. <laughs> I'm just like, I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I respect that. And, okay, so my whole thing here is it's a very double-edged sword here, okay? So while, yes, if you want a game to be continuously supported, if you want the game series to continue, especially if it's like the first game made and it could become a series, you 100% should support that game on launch. You should buy it at full price. Uh, maybe not buy it, it, it uh, like, you know, right off on launch. Obviously, like, if you're not sure about it, it's a brand new game. People are kind of hesitant about that stuff nowadays. So watch reviews, watch gameplay, stuff like that. But then definitely, if you like what you see, buy it at full price, okay? Don't just wait for a sale or wait to get it for free because that's not going to help the developer at all. And we're going to see exactly what happened with Days Gone. It's not going to get a sequel because it performed poorly on the first few months of launch. And that sucks. Most people who are playing it now got it on sale, got it with the uh, PlayStation Plus, yeah. or they got it at the PlayStation Col Plus collection when they got the PS5 because that was also included oh, in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. So it honestly sucks. However, like I just said there, this is a brand new game. People are very hesitant about spending money on brand new titles, especially when lately brand new titles have been kind of jank. Case in point. Yeah. yeah. Case in point, Cyberpunk 2077, ah. Anthem. Uh, there's a lot of games that came out that were brand new titles, brand new IPs, ended up being absolute shite. So yes. I get the hesitancy 100%, but... This guy has a very, very good point. You cannot complain that it's not going to get a sequel if you didn't buy it when it came out. Like, I'm not going to complain that Anthem's not getting a sequel. It fucking should not get a sequel. <laughs> I would complain that Anthem's not getting a sequel, but I also did not buy it on launch. So. Exactly. <laughs> I bought it on launch, okay? I bought, I pre-ordered that shit, and I hate myself every single day. I bought it for ten bucks. I did buy it on the. <laughs> the game is one hundred percent worth ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent worth ten dollars. I got the extra stuff. <laughs> I got the extra edition God. for $10. I mean, as far as, yeah, as far as that goes, I do agree with him. Like, if that's the thing, sales, you know, sales, PS Plus, yeah, that's not helping the developer at all. And no. I think, honestly, <laughs> I think a lot of people are using, you know, oh, it's a new game as an excuse. Because when you think about it, a game like Days Gone, it didn't, it wasn't on sale for at least six, seven months. Like, oh, it wasn't yeah. on sale for, you had plenty of time to watch a video. Exactly. They patched it within those six, seven months. They wildly advertised that they patched it, and you saw a lot of people reviewing, re-reviewing it. Yeah. And they said it was re a really solid buy. So because you had a short attention span and decided to go to something else in, instead, <laughs> instead of waiting for this game, exactly. if you really wanted to play it and really wanted to support it, then you should have done that. And even though on launch, there were, so, there were some small issues. There were some frame rate drops when you were going really really fast on your bike there were some bugs and glitches like, and, yeah like random stuff that literally every single yeah. game on launch has it's impossible to release a perfect game okay it just it's it's just that's how technology works there's freak bugs and stuff in the code but they fixed that within the first month and it ran perfectly after that like it was great like, I and even then it like, got a 60 um, FPS uh, update. Yeah, exactly, too, so. exactly. I even did a review on this on that game way back when it first came out on the channel. I'll link to it uh, on the video. It should be like right up here now. Like I definitely think they are using a new game and flaws as an excuse to just be mad because they're yeah, butthurt exactly. because the developer actually came out and called them on the shit. <laughs> exactly. Like, he, he called them out. Like he was just like, "Look, man, like stop being a cheap bastard and buy the game." Like, <laughs> exactly. Pretty exactly. much. And, 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 yeah, and everyone's shitting on this dude, but I'm just like, "Nah, I'm actually in his corner." Like he made some very valid points here. But guys, we want to pass the question off to you. What do you think about everything we talked about today? What do you think about what the Days Gone writer has said? Do you agree with him or do you think he's 
being kind of an asshole about it. I mean, yeah, he is kind of an asshole about it, but he's an asshole for a reason, okay? His his, yeah. his pride and joy isn't getting a sequel because y'all didn't buy it on launch, all right? <laughs> so he kind of has a reason to be an asshole about it. But yeah, let me know. Yeah. Let us know all you guys are thinking in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you're new to the let channel. Let what you think about our colorful borders. Yeah, thank yeah. You, thank you, Mr. Monkey. For adding some borders to our videos, <laughs> courtesy of you. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, if you're new to the channel and not subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to do so. It would really help us out. We're trying to get up to 200 subs. And if we do, we will be giving away a free game to a special person on whatever system you want. So, please, hit the subscribe button. Get us up to 200. Hit that like button. Share this content with your friends, family, and everyone else. Because YouTube's algorithm does not like small creators anymore <laughs> a game boy advance game so we only have to pay like five cents for this thing and give it to you yeah uh real talk right now it's not gonna be eternal because that game's 70 dollars. <laughs> sorry sorry maybe we'll give away days gone <laughs> no nah, we'll we'll probably announce the game that we're going to give away closer to when we hit our 200 mark but anyways guys thank you so much for watching stay excellent and we'll see you guys in the next dive in Peace. Peace. peace.